The continent of Tamriel can be a bleak place. From the rigid peaks of Skyrim to the ashy wastes of Morrowind, the so-called Land of Dawn's Beauty is for many a land of cynical violence, defined by a brutal struggle for survival against nature, the gods, and their fellow man and myrrh. It is remarkable, then, that in the far northwestern corner of this harsh continent lies a land of idyllic meadows where the sun is gentle, the wine is good, and people cleave true to the values of righteousness and chivalry. Nestled in the heart of High Rock, the Bretons are a mixed-blood race that embodies the strengths of both men and myrrh, as well as their flaws. As the heirs to the ancient Dereni bloodline and the Druids of Galen, their heritage is woven with tales of valour, mysticism and political intrigue. In this video we'll unravel the intricate history of the Bretons, exploring their origins, cultural nuances, and the pivotal role they play in the turbulent affairs of Tamriel. From the towering spires of Daggerfall to the mystical realms of the Reach, join us as we uncover the secrets of the Bretons, their exceptional aptitude for magic, and the challenges they face in a world teetering on the brink of chaos. The Bretons are a Creole people, the result of an ancient joining of men and myrrh. As a byproduct of their elven blood, the Bretons are the most magically gifted humans on Tamriel, with spell weaving coming as naturally to them as breathing. The Bretons are native to the province of High Rock, located in the northwestern corner of Tamriel, and home to the Adamantine Tower, the oldest structure on Nern, said to have been built by the immortal Aedra themselves during the time of creation. The geography of High Rock is as diverse as the Bretons who call the land home. The breathtaking snow-capped peaks of the Rothgarian Mountains and the harsh, craggy landscape of the Reachlands rivals the untamed natural beauty of neighbouring Skyrim, contrasting sharply against the charmingly pastoral western lowlands, with its rolling hills and gentle, windswept meadows. While High Rock as a whole swears fealty to the Septim Empire of Cyrodiil, the province is divided into dozens, if not hundreds, of tiny client states, ruled by a panoply of petty sorcerer kings. Consequently, High Rock is by far the most politically schizophrenic province of Tamriel, an incoherent jumble of nobility and ruling families hopelessly entangled in an intergenerational mess of dynastic ties and overlapping land claims. Anton Varane, a Breton chef working in Skyrim, said it best. You think politics here are something? Well, we Bretons invented politics. Sometimes it is said that even the Bretons themselves have a hard time remembering who exactly rules over who. The Bretons, however, embrace these stereotypes in stride. Find a new hill, they joke, and you can become a king. As a hybrid race with both human and elvish blood, the Bretons are generally accepted among both societies, albeit with an undercurrent of condescension from both. Humans with a proud mannish warrior tradition, like the Nords of Skyrim or the Colovians of Western Cyrodiil, tend to view the Bretons as a reliable ally in their struggle against the elven tyranny of the Thalmor, but find their cultural frivolity and magical superiority just a little too elf-like for their tastes. Elven races like the Dunmer and Ultmer, on the other hand, tend to hold a begrudging respect for Breton spellcraft but still can't help but view the Bretons as nothing more than the degenerated descendants of a once pure strain of Altmer genes. In order to fully explore the origins of the Breton race, we must study the histories of both their elven and human ancestors, beginning with the latter. Long before the ancestors of the Nords sailed down from the frozen continent of Atmora to drive the snow elves from Skyrim, other tribes of man had already inhabited much of Tamriel for millennia. These early prehistoric humans, although diverse in culture, custom and language, are referred to by modern historians using a catch-all ethnonym, the Needs. As far back as the Middle Merethic era, a thousand years before the beginning of recorded history, Nedic tribes had a presence across all of northern Tamriel, establishing settlements in what is now western Morrowind, Cyrodiil, southern Skyrim, Hammerfell and of course High Rock. The Needs of High Rock, the direct ancestors of the modern Bretons, were an animist people who worshipped the forest god Ifre, the same primordial woodland spirit worshipped by the Bosma Wood Elves. These Nedic proto-Bretons were guided by a caste of mystic druids who practiced a form of magic drawn from the earth bones, the magical forces that govern the law of nature, and lived a life that emphasized harmony with the green. Having discussed the Bretons' human ancestors, let us now turn to their elven ones. 
Supposedly arriving from the mythical and probably metaphysical continent of Altmeris, the ancestors of all of today's modern elven races arrived in the Somerset Isles in the early Merethic era, from where they spread out across the vast Tamrielic mainland, coming to dominate over the continent's many indigenous beast races and primitive Nadic tribes. After generations of separation, the descendants of different groups of Elfmere pioneers eventually diverged into many elven subraces. The elves who settled High Rock during this era would ultimately become a strain of High Elf, or Ultmer, culturally and physically indistinguishable from their kinsmen in the Somerset Isles. By far the most successful clan of Ultmer to settle High Rock was the Dereni. At some point in the Middle Merethic era, the Dereni left their ancestral homeland and sailed north, seeking new fortunes. Through their superior arcane prowess and potion craft, they established themselves as the new top dog in High Rock even managing to capture the Adamantine Tower on the Isle of Balfiera. Establishing their base of power at the base of the primordial Ur Pillar of Creation, the Dereni became the hegemons of vast swathes of High Rock. Over in Cyrodiil, the Aelides, or Heartland High Elves, had reduced the native Nadic population of their vast domains into a tortured slave caste. The Dereni, in contrast, were not as aggressively psychopathic as their Aelide cousins. They did not enslave the needs of High Rock, instead establishing a feudal hierarchy, with themselves at the top and the humans as their free subjects. However, the Dereni were prolific. Unlike many of their Ultima cousins who considered tainting their pure elven bloodline with mannish blood to be the highest sin, the Dereni were all too happy to take on Nadic concubines. Far from being discarded as unwanted bastards, the mixed-race children born of these unions, the so-called Man Mary, came to enjoy a privileged position in the Dereni hegemony. They became something of a middle class in a racially stratified society, with their Dereni genitors giving them privileged positions among the needs, using them as intermediaries to rule over their human kinsmen at a local level on behalf of their elven fathers. Over time, this new Man Mary caste became known as the Bretons, from the old Elnafex Beratu, meaning half. As these half-breeds were forbidden from marrying elves, they bred into the Nadic population, their elven bloodline disseminating into the human peasant masses. Generation after generation, the Dereni continued to produce half-breed children, who would then marry into the Nadic tribes. Over time, the entire human population of High Rock had inherited a substratum of elven blood. Thus, through love and not war, the majority of the population of High Rock had become Bretons, a predominantly mannish species of elven heritage. Having covered the story of how the Bretons came to be, let us now take a moment to explore their society as it exists in the contemporary era. One thing that many Bretons have in common is a romantic fascination with the chivalric ideal. Just as every hill on High Rock has its own king, so too does every valley have a wandering hedge knight seeking to make a name for himself through deeds of virtue and valour. According to the Pocket Guide to the Empire, youths of all professions and trades in High Rock spend their free time in knightly pursuits, real and imagined. This quest obsession has served as High Rock's sense of national identity, a peculiar form of altruism and mutual reliance that binds its people together. Breton culture is, for lack of a better word, bougie. Having inherited a love for sophistication from their high elven forebears, the Bretons are obsessed with the finer things in life, be it fine wines, thoroughbred horses, or fancy threads. Nowhere is this more readily expressed than in their food. Bretons are considered the best chefs in Tamriel, their haute cuisine unparalleled throughout the continent. Granted, this may be partially due to the fact that the Dunma eat bug eggs, Khajiit food is diabetes central, and the Bosma chow down on people pot pies, but that is neither here nor there. Of course, it would be remiss of us to discuss Breton culture without discussing the role that magic plays within it. Descended from mystic druids on their human side and mighty Dereni wizards on their elven side, the Bretons are one of the most magically gifted races on Tamriel. Magic permeates at every level of Breton society, from the lowest serf to the highest king. Other human races often find the normalization of magic in High Rock to be both remarkable and unsettling. Fahamal, a Redguard trader, remarked as much, Our Breton allies are comfortable with magic, yes, more than comfortable I would say, 
I have even seen their youths practice illusions upon each other in the very streets of Daggerfall. No Red Guard would ever permit his own children to tamper with magic in such an irresponsible fashion. Do they not realize the dangers? Naturally, spellcraft plays a huge role in Breton warfare. There are few fighters on Tamriel as formidable as the Breton Mage Knight, who merges their arcane aptitude with traditional martial prowess to deadly effect. Collectively, the Bretons lack the lockstep discipline of the Cyrodiilic legions, too fixated on individual acts of heroism and valour to serve as a cog in a collective whole. However, in terms of individual versatility, Breton spellswords are among the most lethal fighters in the Land of Dawn's beauty. As can be expected from a people of mixed heritage, the modern Breton religion is a syncretic blend of faiths. As a result of their long vassalage to the imperial throne in Cyrodiil, the Bretons have long since adopted the eight divines of the empire as their main gods, constituting Akatosh, Arche, Dibella, Julianos, Kinnereth, Mara, Stendar, and Zenithar. However, elven deities like the Ultima hero god Finasta remain important, worshipped by Breton mages who value their elven blood. One of the Breton's gods is Geoffrey, also known as Ifre, the god of the forest and spirit of the now. Through their worship of the Father of the Green, the Bretons maintain their connection to their ancient Nadic ancestors and their druidic rites. It should be noted that High Rock is also home to many Breton clans who have rejected the lavish, feudally stratified society of the modern age. The Bjulsai River tribes, also known as the River Horse Bretons, are an indigenous tribal people who wear fur armor and bone necklaces and live a nomadic pastoral lifestyle. Throughout the province's deepwood groves and mountain caves, the weird women dwell. Rejecting the trappings of both man-made and mermaid civilization, these all-female witch covens live in wild isolation, guided only by the earth bones and their devotion to the forest father Ifre. It would also be remiss of us to not mention the Reachmen, the untamed, briar-hearted clansfolk of the Misty Crags. Travelers to Skyrim will no doubt be gravely familiar with the region of the Reach, and the vicious Forsworn, a sect of Reachmen rebelling against the Nordic authority of the Jarl of Markarth. What they may not realize is that half of the region known as the Reach lies in High Rock, and that the Reachmen are of predominantly Breton blood. Granted, both the stubbornly free-spirited Reachmen and the proudly cultivated Bretons take serious offense when one claims that either of their peoples shares anything in common with the other. Having painted a landscape portrait of Breton society, let us now run a brief highlight reel of Breton history. We will begin back in the early First Era, when High Rock was still under the rule of the Dereni High Elves. In First Era 200, when the Nord King Vrage received word of a breed of Man Merry living in the Western Reach, he resolved to liberate this ostensibly enslaved race of men from their ostensible elven masters, kickstarting a spree of wars which would see the Nords conquer large swathes of not only High Rock, but northern Cyrodiil and Morrowind as well. Although the Nordic Empire collapsed within a few generations, its legacy in High Rock still survives today. Daggerfall, the largest city in the province, was originally founded by these ancient Nordic conquerors. Ultimately, these Nordic land gains didn't stick, and within two centuries, the Dereni had regained control of High Rock. However, their Marish hegemony would soon have to answer the bell of another human empire. In First Era 243, the enslaved needs of Sirod, long suffering under the sadistic rule of their Heartland High Elf masters, rose up in revolt under the leadership of the slave queen Alessia, toppling the Allied Empire and establishing an imperium of their own. Soon, the Alessian Empire, or First Empire of Man, turned their sights upon High Rock, resolving to expel its elven oligarchs and free its enserved humans. However, the mare-blooded men of the West had no interest in letting the former slaves of Cyrodiil expel their Dereni forebears. In First Era 482, at the Battle of Glenumbria Moors, an alliance of Dereni wizards, allied refugees, and Breton spell knights decisively defeated the Alessian hordes. For the Dereni, this was a Pyrrhic victory. The Ultima elites of High Rock had always been a small, ruling minority, and after this conflict, their population had become so diminished that they were forced to retreat to the Adamantine Tower, leaving the rest of High Rock to their Breton children. Without the Dereni as a unifying force, the Breton people split politically into hundreds of tiny, independent city-states and fiefdoms. 
In time, the kingdoms of Daggerfall, Camlorn, Weyrest, Shornhelm, North Point, Evermore, Farron, and Johanna emerged as the most influential polities. No sooner had the Bretons received their independence did they receive new next-door neighbours. Having fled the shores of their sundered homeland of Yokuda, the warrior wave of the Ragada arrived upon the shores of Hammerfell in First Era 792, annihilating the region's native Nadig and Marish populations in a wave of ferocious conquest. The Spell Knights of High Rock would keep the nascent Redguards contained to their side of the Iliac Bay, and the nobility of High Rock would proceed to spend pretty much the rest of their history in an intermittent dance of war, trade, and intermarriage with the children of the Alakir. It was also in the First Era that the Orsama, or Orcs, established the titular kingdom of Orsama in the Hrothgar Mountains. Time and again, the Orcs of Orsama would find themselves at conflict with their Breton neighbours, and time and again their capital would be sacked at Breton hands. In First Era 1029, the Bretons willingly joined the empire they had fought to repel 500 years ago and accepted the Eight Divines of Cyrodiil as their chief pantheon of gods. From here on out, the Bretons, while remaining internally divided, would continue to be consistently loyal vassals of the various imperial dynasties based out of the imperial city in Cyrodiil. Not a living soul in the Land of Dawn's Beauty does not know the story of Tiber Septim, the great uniter who emerged from the chaos of the Second Era Interregnum, conquered all of Tamriel, kicked off the Third Era, and was elevated to godhood upon his death, becoming the Ninth Divine of the Imperial Pantheon. Official Imperial propaganda claims that Talos's birthplace was at Mora, the ancient homeland of the Nords. But at Mora had become an uninhabitable block of ice by the late Second Era. Instead, the heretical but pragmatic Arcturian heresy claims that Tiber Septim, known in his youth as Hegelti Earlybeard, was born on the island of Alcair, located in the province of High Rock. If this is true, that makes it very likely that Tiber Septim was a Breton, or at least of partial Breton blood. Even official imperial accounts admit that the majority of Septim emperors, from Tiber to Uriel IV, were either Breton-blooded or had strong ties to High Rock. Indeed, the Bretons often receive an undeserved reputation as the lackeys and loyal dogs of Cyrodiil. But in fact, the opposite is true, for while the empire of Tiber Septim was based in Cyrodiil, dynastically, an argument could be made that it was a Breton empire. Far from playing second fiddle in importance to Cyrodiil, High Rock itself was time and again center stage in deciding the fate of the empire. In Third Era 249, when the Murish Dread King Haman Camorin rebelled against the Septim dynasty and cut a bloody swath through western Tamriel at the head of a horde of undead and Daedra, it was an alliance of High Rock kingdoms holding the line at the barony of Dwinan who put an end to his campaign of terror. When the illegitimate son of Mankar Camorin kicked off a little thing called the Oblivion Crisis, High Rock seemed to fare better than most other provinces against the Daedric tides. Then, in the wake of the crisis, with the final strain of Imperial Dragonborn blood spent, the last Septim dead and the Empire in a state of disarray, the kingdoms of High Rock remained loyal to Cyrodiil, even as Black Marsh, Morrowind, Somerset, Valenwood and Hammerfell were lost to the Imperial throne. As of 4th Era 201, with the civil war in Skyrim raging on, High Rock stands poised to potentially be the last province to remain loyal to the White Gold Throne and its incumbent Mede dynasty. Only the Elder Scrolls themselves can tell what the future has in store for the Kraol children of Men and Myr, but it would be unwise to write them off. For while every hill on High Rock can spawn a king, so too have the Man Mary Spellslingers of the Western Hills proven time and again that they can be the children and the architects of empires. This series will continue with explorations of all the races and cultures of Tamriel, so make sure you are subscribed and have pressed the bell button to see it. Please consider liking, commenting and sharing, it helps immensely. Our videos would be impossible without our kind patrons and YouTube channel members, whose ranks you can join via the links in the description to know our schedule, get early access to our videos, access our Discord, and much more. This is the Wizards and Warriors channel, and we will catch you on the next one.